It is time to take off the training wheels. Easy money. If only it were that easy. The thing is, anything worth doing is hard. Just ask my wife. This is the culmination of, oh, I don't want to say, maybe eight, probably more like 10 hours of dickery. But in the end, we're doing okay. This is, of course, is a town pump CNC project, uh, not for money, but for tits and pickles. Now, I'm very chuffed with this, but we're getting some successes here. We're doing five axis positioning. You saw the results. We're gonna, we're gonna run this. Essentially what I'm gonna do, we're gonna build on our successes. What I'm gonna do is learn, we're, we're climbing up the learning curve here. Now it feels, because of this success, it feels we're, we're like we're at that 80% mark. Dunning-Kruger, of course, dictates that we're actually only at that 20% mark. So we're, we're just coming out of the you suck zone. We still got a long ways to go, but fuck me, it feels so good, partner, to get out of that stew of turd sandwiches I've been eating. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, here's the thing, because I learned, autodid I learned didactically and, and heuristically by experience and myself, that means that I follow my own passion instead of following a class syllabus. Now the problem I have been seeing, and there are some excellent, excellent tutorials, however, they all trickle down from that uh, pédagogy pedag pedag en français, something to do with eating stinky feet. I don't know. I, what the teachers do in the teacher's lounge is their own affair. But, you see what happens at school is that the main criteria for teaching is filling the period up. Same thing at university, any kind of schooling, the main criteria is filling up that time slot. So you end up doing a whole bunch of busy work. And we see that as well with um, experts, uh, uh, subject matter experts doing videos and they end up just filming one of their classes and sticking it up. Well, the information density isn't high enough for me. I don't like skipping around. I just want to find out where the bottleneck is, surmount the bottleneck, and continue learning on my own. So what ends up happening is the guys are spending 80% of the time trying to teach you 20% of the little tiny minutia. I don't give a fuck about the minutia. I want to learn about what gives us results 80% of the time. So I only have to learn 20%. What I'm driving at here is I've condensed down the knowledge. So if you look at some of the videos here uh, about fusion and machining, they're an hour long, okay? And then some guys have condensed that down, John Saunders, to about 20% of that hour long discourse. You see what I'm getting at here? So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take John Saunders 20 minutes or 12 minutes, I'm gonna shrinkify that by 80%, we're gonna have little tiny bites. Three minutes, four minutes, we're gonna do a tool path, the problems, how it works, and that's it. So essentially, this is gonna be a choose your own adventure CNC machining video. I know some of you guys ain't into CNC machining. Like I say, it's a tool. I was very reticent to get into it because I already have lots of seat time uh, in front of the confuser. However, this is a tool and it's a very powerful tool. If somebody asked me to go drill a hole in rock and I'm, am I gonna grab a, a steep nose hammer and John Henry style it? No, I'm gonna go drill it with a rock hammer. It's, is it cheating? Well, it's not as much work and I can get a hell of a lot more done. So there it is. The CNC allows us to get a hell of a lot more work done. It's the lever. Made a fair few man glitters. We also got some spare stock. We're gonna run the setup. I just did a very quick layup in uh, Fusion 360. We gotta get the stock to this because this is three inches and the vise opens, but to do. So the link here in the, in the doobly, no, a link here and also in the doobly-doo to set up the work coordinate system. We gotta probe it in, we'll use the Renishaw Pro and handle jog down. I set the tool change to right over the vice corner. So we should be right there. It's 
facing it off. Now we're going to give those little half inch keys on either side so it will fit in the two inch vise. Now that face mill, that's got radius edges on the inserts, so we got to come in with an end mill, flat bottom, and clean it up. For stock of stock, we're going to put this affixed in the five axis vise. This thing, this confuser, blows my mind. It, it can do mathematics like you ain't never smelled before. You would think that the workpiece would have to be centered in this because everything's spinning a thing. No, you can put it kiltered right over, probe it in, it knows that point and then recalculates for all the tool paths. It's, when you're running the five axis, she's real persnickety. A lot of times the tool, well, it, this doesn't happen to me very often, but the tool holder is too short when you're canted over and so she'll hit the vise. So you really got to watch that. So what I like to do is keep the workpiece, a main amount of work, as far over in the vise so that uh, yeah, we don't run out of shaft before we run out of stroke. You get the idea. There we go. It's doing its thing way over there in the rhubarb. Slotting and yeah, moved and did a little bit of... Oh, I got to get rid of that. That's a, a little bit of chamfering that I don't want. It, it fucks up, so I'm just getting rid of it. Barking off some big boy chips. Es una salsa muy picante. I'm just going to run through the machining ops. And then if you want to know more, you can click on the doobly do in order to learn more about that process. One of my pet peeves is guys will show either the cam, like the Fusion Vigeo or the machining, but they never show both or very rarely show both. And if they are, it's always far too long. So that's why I wanted to break this down into itty bitty bites. So this is just the facing cut, kind of unnecessary. I like to get a nice bite on there with the drills in the next uh, bunch of steps. So we're just gonna spot drill now and link up in the doobly-doo there if you want to see what the process in Fusion is. So the reason I'm spot drilling this is, well, there's some helical entries further in, in some adaptives. And you'll see helical entries a lot in uh, like John Saunders videos because he uses a Tormach which doesn't have tool changing. So it's a pain in the arse to tool change to, to pre-drill holes. But it's far faster if you have a tool changer to pre-drill holes because drilling removes more material quicker than any other process. Now we're repositioning. That five axis, well this is four axis here positioning, but that's super robust in Fusion. The problem is the simultaneous five axis moves in Fusion just not worth the steam off your piss. I can't get that to fucking work for... So now we're drilling the uh, eight by, I think, 32 uh, mounting holes. Just peck drilling that. So that's just a super easy setting and it's a good way to save your drill bits is the peck drilling because it only pecks down a little bit, then it breaks the chip and then continues on its way. Now we're gonna get into some adaptive roughing. The roughers and the end mills are two different tools entirely. They're used for different things. And this is a 2D adaptive. I prefer the 2D adaptive to the 3D adaptive because you have more control. The 3D adaptive is kind of like the auto router. It, it, it does what it thinks it needs to do, but there's always some extraneous moves. And the 2D adaptive, you have to input more. You have to tell it what to do quite a bit more. So what we're doing is we're going in two steps in the middle just to pocket that out and, and going around the periphery leaving radial and axial stock to take off in the next step, which will be the flat end mill. 
Here we're coming in with the 3 8 end mill. We're going to clean up all those roughing passes. It's a square corner end mill. And as I say, this is a totally different tool than a rougher. Of course, at the square corner of the end mill, there's no meat there at the very tip. So I don't like using these because they're so expensive and you wear the tip off and then it's done. So you're better off doing some roughing and, and possibly some end milling with a radius corner. Because what ends up happening is you wear that chip off. There's no meat there. You look at the very tip of an end mill that's square cut and there's absolutely no meat there. Now we're repositioning. That's that move, a 90 degree move. Now we're going to cut the O-ring groove with a 16th end mill, three flute, just a little guy. And it's going to helical ramp around the entire periphery of that O-ring groove. Now this is going real slow, being super careful with this because uh, a 16th end mill doesn't have a whole lot of meat there. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room if you fuck something up. And uh, here comes the interesting one. It took me a while to figure this out. We're using a slotting saw, slitting rather saw, in order to do the heat sink fins. And this is uh, oh, a lot of pucker, a lot of pucker. But just being not, being, yeah, very, very careful in this step. You got a four inch saw rolling around there. Um, and there's no clearance there in the, the, you know, if that gullet plugs up, you're hooped. A champ here, you'd think it would be quite easy, but it's actually very challenging because it goes inside, it goes outside. It's not as automated as you'd like, and then you can't trust it ever. Because the way Fusion makes the arrow look, you can't tell if it's cutting on the inside or the outside. It's kind of janky. And you notice the table, the XY rotary getting real close to the head, that Z depth. And uh, when you first run this, you gotta, I mean, you gotta have your head on a swivel. There, we're done that step. And she's bringing her back and presenting. Now I'm gonna try some fancy footwork. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the second op in the other vise as a G55 work offset. So we'll position, for the second op, we'll position in the vise, crank her down. We'll probe it and then keep that probe reading under G55 instead of G54. Then we can combine the programs and it'll run both programs at the same time. That means we're only opening the door and fiddle fucking with the vices once for every part instead of twice for every part. Up here, if and you're interested in double ending her with multiple work offsets. We're probing that part exactly the same way, only we've changed the work offsets to G55. Here's the new program running in graphics. All I did was got rid of the extraneous uh, percent signs as well as the, yeah, there we go. So she's going to do this guy and then move over to here. We just finished that first off in the little five axis vise. Now we're switched over and we're gonna do the second off without opening the doors. 
The confuser's just gonna run. If I could get something to focus, you fuck. And I'm gonna, uh, I haven't run this, so I'm gonna run the rapids a little slower. I'm gonna slow down the feed rate as well. We're just decking off the uh, extra material. We were using that material for fixturing. That's a good cheat is just using extra material and then bucking it off. You, I mean, it's so expensive to run this machine anyway that the uh, quarter inch of aluminum in the, in the grand scheme of things, not that big a deal, especially in these low quantities. If you're running high quantities, that's a whole different kettle of fish. And, but, you know, it's all about optimization. It depends how much effort you want to put in for how much payoff. If you're, if you're doing millions of parts, then yeah, it's worth spending eight, 10 hours to get a couple seconds out of each cycle. If you're doing 10 parts, it ain't worth it. All right, that's it. Ain't too big. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. Apologize, got to be done. Proud Papa coming through. Jiggity tax. Kid's a genius. Look at this. Five years old. Perspective. Unicorn cat winking at you with, with shark. Hey, look at this. I've seen ninja nerds do worse drawings than this. You know, though, that she's my daughter when she starts drawing the cat walking away from us winking.